It's time once again for the Passion to Succeed podcast, where we explore the traits, mindsets, and attitudes of passionate and successful individuals. This show is for anyone who wants to make a difference, make more money, learn from the greatest minds, and discover how to be more successful in all you do and doing it with a pure passion to succeed. Here's your host, serial entrepreneur, successful author, and the world's most passionate master coach, Craig White. Hi everyone, uh, good morning, I hope you're all well today. Uh, joining me we have a great guy, Joseph Clough. Um, he's an international trainer, um, a therapist, as well as being a Hay House author. And his goal is quite simple, it's to, to help people achieve their full potential. And it's something I've really got a lot of time for. And I uh, really appreciate you joining us today, Joseph. How are you? I'm very well. I'm, I'm incredibly well, I found. How are you doing? Yeah, terrific, mate. Thank you. Terrific. Now, you're yeah. based in Cambridge. Is, is that where you've kind of been, you know, from? Yeah, I, I've, well, I've been uh, born here, born in Cambridge. Uh, I've, I've been, I moved around to Liverpool and so on, but I've come back and then I'm just really, wherever my business goes, that's where I tend to flow as well. So, yeah, uh, been terrific. in Cambridge for quite a long time now. Oh, that's wonderful. Hey guys, I've um, I've um, met Joseph uh, over the last couple of years, and I'm really excited about having him um, on our podcast show today. And um, you'll you'll get to see why why as we're chatting. I think Joseph has had a successful career in uh, training and as a, a therapist, and um, certainly can bring some wisdom and knowledge to really help us make a change, everlasting change, and a difference to. You know our life and our future. I mean, tell us a little bit about your journey, Joseph, because you've got yeah. quite a quite an exciting story, really. Yeah, well, it's a, it's a bit of an interesting journey, um, but I'm sure it's going to be very, very familiar to uh, your listeners. And it's one of those cases where, when I was young, I was very, very insecure and very shy. I, I did absolutely terrible at school. I was told that I wasn't really going to amount to much, <laughs> and. <laughs> It was just very much a case of not feeling good enough and having these blushing and self-conscious kind of episodes when I was talking to people. And that really continued all the way till I was about 18. Well, it was when I was 18 years old. And then I thought, I can't be doing this anymore. I'm in a terrible job. I don't feel good about myself. I've got these emotional issues, psychological issues, and something has to change. So ultimately, I went on a mission to do as much as I could, to learn as much as I could, to be able to change my own life. And when I started doing that, I actually somehow got into this business and I've been doing um, seminars and trainings and audio programs and and seeing my clients for the last um, 10 years now. So it really started that whole journey by making a decision that, look, there's my life. I need to be able to take control of it, take responsibility because no one else is going to. And going on that mission to really find the answers to be able to live a happy, fulfilled and content life. And from there, it's kind of led me to this point now, which has been really quite ironic because um, when you think about it, if I didn't have the issue, I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing right now, which is living and helping people as much as possible. So I'm actually very oddly thankful for actually having those very insecure problems. Because that's actually led me to this new exciting life for the last ten years, so it's a very odd one, really. Yeah, it's um, it's obviously given you that that strength to to you know make the the decisions and choices that you have done over the last few years and lead you to a place where you can, I suppose, associate with people that have had similar experiences, which gives you a, an understanding to be able to really help and support and make a difference with people. Yeah, I, I think you're absolutely right, and you you'll definitely know this from all your amazing experience, but. A lot of the time, uh, no matter what the issue can be, usually if we don't, if we have a belief of like not being good enough or worthy, that has such a big effect on our life. Just one belief system can have an effect on your relationships, your career, um, your health. So when we begin to understand what limiting beliefs are and how important beliefs are, once we get the empowering beliefs, we absolutely transform how we see life and all the opportunities life has to offer us. Exciting. So you're so you're actually a certified trainer of the sort of um, neuro linguistic um, programming. That's Time, the one. Timeline therapy, and you're also a master hypnotherapist as well. I mean, which which came first for you? Where did you? 
You know, <laughs> yeah, it is. Well, they're very interlinked and by nature, yeah. um, which we'll get into, I'm sure. Um, but I actually first started with hypnosis. Now, my dad did it as a hobby, so I was very, very skeptical at first and also a little bit fearful, thinking that he might hypnotize me one day <laughs> to do more things when I was younger. Um, I'm sure was, he did. <laughs> yeah, yeah, as far as I know, um, he, he may well have done that. And, he actually told me, look, you're, in, you're not in a good place. Just go on this hypnosis course, if anything, just to get some headspace, get a bit of clarity. Uh, so I got into this hypnosis course, which was based in Scarborough at the time. So it's a long journey from Cambridge. Like, it must have been four or five hours for me and my little old one litre car back then. Mm-hmm. And I, I, I took that journey. And on the way back, I thought, wow, what a transformational change when you start to reconnect with the inner resources of yourself, you can make such a difference in your life and difference in your life. And I wanted to be able to share that. So hypnosis definitely came first. And the NLP, uh, as you said, is neuro linguistic program is really like a spin-off to hypnosis. It's a way of doing things a little bit more consciously, but you're working with your unconscious mind and timeline actually came from NLP as well. So you could say the hypnosis was there, or in hypnosis has been around for thousands and thousands of years, ultimately. Mm. And NLP, being about 50, 60 years old or so now, um, actually was modeled on hypnosis and psychotherapy, and then kind of channeling it into this new kind of type of process. Mm-hmm. Amazing. Okay, that's interesting, because I know you've got a, a deep-seated belief that, you know, we're always ever-evolving and, and ever-learning, and people really should kind of be sponges to, you know, develop themselves and find out more about their, their, their true potential. That's right. I mean, the, the way I see it, and I think sometimes society can ingrain certain beliefs in ourselves to be like other people, to, to have all the cars, to be able to look like this certain thing. And ultimately, that can breed fear and um, feelings of inadequacy. And what I want to say in my message is that ultimately, we are all perfect. You know, we can actually may still want to make changes, but ultimately within you is perfection. Mm-hmm. And we can put our attention on ourselves and realize that everything we need is within us. Where about that be contentment, inner fulfillment, peace, confidence? It's all there within us. And it's just ultimately our potentiality. And the problem is we look sometimes for the external means to get it. We go on this kind of searching. I need this to be fulfilled or I need this relationship to know that I'm loved. My whole aspect is that actually it's all there and it always has been there. We just have to put our attention to all those wonderful qualities, to feel gratitude, to be able to understand that we are so worthy that you can do anything that you want in your life when you put your mind to it. And I, I think that's, we were born with that. When you think about it, Craig, when, when we were born, we were completely one wholeness. Mm-hmm. We were completely whole in any way. We didn't have the understanding of language and labeling. We didn't have any limiting beliefs. We didn't feel at that point lots of negative emotions or even good emotions. We were just literally a being. And then through time, as we go through experience, it can create sometimes, not all the time, but conflicts or limiting beliefs or certain labels or having conflicting values or behaviors or habits. And what my intention is to really get us back to that source wholeness and resolve conflict and really acquire that inner belief that, yeah, everything's fine. Everything is perfect. We just have to put our attention to it. I suppose this brings us on the, the power of our beliefs. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm certainly a firm believer that we live our, our daily lives in, life with, in line with our internal beliefs. And, but what's, That's right. what's scary, I think, is when people start to appreciate and understand that our beliefs have typically and generally been created by outside experiences, other people's influences, that social environment that we, we find us in, that, you know, what's commonly, I suppose, branded as the power of association. Um, yeah. How can people take back their sort of the power and control of their own beliefs and get this right from inside, which is what you were just you know, mentioning? Well, I think the one thing to consider is, I mean, like you said, uh, the power of association and other people's beliefs. But I'm always curious to know, where did they get their beliefs from? Hmm. Now, the chances are they got it from their environment um, years before we got that belief, if we're younger than um, whoever we learned it from. Because usually, Greg, as you know, we get imprinted by our family, our friends, our peers. And if we track back where their beliefs come from, the chances are 
that they were taught that or they were told that life's a certain way. But where do they get their beliefs from? Mm. Well, the chances are the people before them were told that's a certain way of living. So ultimately, we could be actually living limiting beliefs or certain beliefs which are generations old, like just generations old that we think, actually, when we look at the reality of it, where did this belief come from? Does it empower me? And does it really apply to me? So leading on to that question you just said, I think the first step to realize is that we must be conscious of the beliefs we believe in because beliefs do make up our world. Mm. When we become conscious of our beliefs, we have the ability to change it. And I remember a great quote, and I think it was, we're only kept in cages we cannot see. So we're only kept in cages we cannot see. Mm. So ultimately, if you're unable and you just live these unconscious processes, you're unable to understand the restrictions within that. But when we become conscious of our belief systems, it ultimately means we now have the power back. We, when we become conscious, we can take responsibility for them. And when we take responsibility, we get ownership. And when we get ownership, we can actually start to make those fundamental changes. So the first step is being conscious of the beliefs that we have within us. And we can ask ourselves, if we have a problem or anything like that, we can ask ourselves, what belief do I have about myself which makes this so? So if I have the belief of, uh, I mean, I'm like, I can't get a relationship, I may have got some anxiety or worry, I could ask myself, what is the belief I have about myself which makes me unable to do that? And that brings us to the source of that limiting belief. When we become conscious of that, we can think, well, is this my belief? Was I taught this belief? Was I, let's take the money example. We may have the, the belief system that money's a bad thing or it leads to evil, or I feel guilty. Where did that belief come from? Did we get taught it? Did we just um, pick it up through some certain experiences, which is very common? I mean, if we take my example, um, when I, I felt not good enough, because I remember clearly when I was at school, when a teacher said, Joseph, you're not good enough to be able to go to the next level if you don't understand this process, uh, which is like going to secondary school. So that I thought at that moment, wow, the teacher has authority. They know me and know my abilities. And they're saying, I'm not good enough. But the, the thing we must consider is the chances are the limiting beliefs which we have formed were, you could say, formed at a place where we didn't have enough information or knowledge to make the right belief system. So if we create a limiting belief at, say, five years old, or yep. 10 years old, or 15 years old. How much life experience do we have to make that judgment? The chances are not many. We don't really have life experience. So maybe that event overpowered us, or someone told us something, and we just took it on uncritically. Like, I think we don't take on beliefs on for fun. We do it for positive intentions. Um, so we know that the belief system is there for a reason, but is it still applicable to where I am now in life? Once we get those learnings, then that belief system starts to disappear. And when that disappears, as you said, you change your reality. You perceive a whole new reality from scarcity, from being limited, to absolute optimism, to absolute opportunity. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. And I think I understand the power of you know um, people being conscious of their beliefs and kind of knowing where they are. And I really like you, the way you've sort of taken that back with saying, well, look, you know, we could actually be living beliefs of, you know, generations of, you know, years and years and years ago, which have very little relevance to today where we are right now. Um, so what, what can people do with regards to obviously they're conscious of their beliefs um, and they can, you know, ask this question about, you know, what, what do I have about myself which makes me unable to do that, so to speak? How can they then start to replace them with new empowering beliefs? What, what um, actions there's a, could you recommend? Well, there's a couple of ways, and um, I'll, I'll try and give you with the time that we have. Um, mm. One thing is, is preserving learnings. Now, the, the, the reason why we have limiting beliefs, so let's take the example of not being good enough, which is very common. The limiting belief of not being good enough is actually a protective mechanism. Like all um, issues that we have, our body does it for a certain reason. If we take the belief of not being good enough, if I have that belief in my mind, it will keep me safe and I won't push myself 
out there. So I won't go into situations in case I get hurt because I don't believe I'm good enough. Um, what if people think of this of me because I don't feel I'm good enough? So it's very much like a keep me in my comfort zone. Well, not really comfort, it's just my familiar zone because it's not very comfortable if you have an issue. <laughs> yeah. So it's a very familiar zone, but I'm going to stay here and be protected. Now, the one thing is, once we get our unconscious mind to learn what needs to be learned, the problem will start to disappear. But to make it a little bit more specific and a bit easier for us, if you can imagine, Craig, you have a limiting belief. Mm -hmm. And as you imagine that limiting belief, how you know that it's true, how you see it in your mind or how you feel about it, you keep on asking um, one of three questions. Remember you'd you say, well, for what purpose do I have this belief? And be or for what intention do I have this belief? Or and the third one is, what would this belief, what's this belief trying to get me? Because it's not getting you anything good, but what's, it, what's the intention or the purpose behind it, like the motivation? So we dissociate from the, the behavior itself and go back to its core intention. Once we get that, say, the intention may be, well, it's trying to protect me. We go, for what purpose? Protection. And that might be, well, so I feel safe. For what purpose? Safety and protection. Well, so I feel comfortable in my environment. And we just keep on asking those questions. Now, when you do that, and you continually do that for at least 10 to 15 times, your neurology will actually break outside of that belief system. So to run it quickly through, it could be the first one's protection, the second one's safety, the next one's comfort. Uh, if I feel comfortable and I'm protected, I feel actually um, quite happy in my situation intentionally. What will that get me? Well, that will give me confidence. And we actually become in conflict with the original conflict for limiting belief. Does that make sense? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm following you. Yeah, definitely. It's one of, I think I'd have to listen to you again um, and practice. I think one of the, is going to be the keys for people to, um, as you said, look at this 10 to 15 times to really. Yeah, I mean, the way to, to do it is if you can imagine that every belief system, limiting belief system has a boundary, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. um, like a label, you could say. Ultimately, by saying for what purpose or intention, we're going to the highest intention why our unconscious mind runs in. And when we go there in our mind and we consider it, the unconscious mind will have to reevaluate itself in accordance to that belief system. So I know it sounds very technical, but when you apply it, uh, you'll actually see these fundamental changes because you're going for what purpose, for what purpose, for what purpose. And ultimately, your brain unconsciously will take you to a state of the opposite of that limiting belief system. So we're actually keeping the intent of safety, but generating a whole new association to an empowering belief of being worthy instead. Yeah, I understand, mate. So, so we're you, breaking through that neurological boundary of that limiting belief. Yeah, so you're becoming conscious of it, and then I suppose you're, you're asking the questions, you're challenging that belief. And by doing so, you, as you said, you're stepping out that boundaries and associating a different belief with that feeling of safety or confidence or whatever. That's right. So you're keeping the safety, but you've got this new belief system, which actually supports you in the right way. Awesome. <laughs> Fantastic. So, you know, you mentioned sort of, you know, um, going into, I suppose, NL, NLP and the neuro linguistic program. I mean, it, am I right in saying this is really just like a set of skills that we already have within us that mm -hmm. we can very much actively use, you know, for you know, within our mind, body, and, and soul, really, to run our own life much more successful. Yes, it it definitely is. I mean, the metaphor I paint in my mind is if you can imagine an overgrown garden, mm. and if you go down the one root of that garden, what begins to happen? You it becomes more well trodden down, doesn't it? Yeah, you clear a pathway. That's right. Now, think of if we have a, a problem. The more times we activate that problem, think it, feel it, act, and react that way. It becomes more ingrained and you go down that pathway. NLP is about interrupting that pattern unconsciously and going down the new pathway. Because if we just take that metaphor of the garden into a brain, mm -hmm. like a neuro network, so more times you think, more times you feel, the more times you act and react and associate, the neuro networks become stronger. Mm -hmm. NLP is really getting the unconscious mind to develop a new pathway. So rather thinking this, you think this. Or where are you feeling this? You feel that. Um, so it ultimately transforms you consciously and unconsciously by giving you the resources that you already have within you and breaking through those limitations. 
And do you think, you know, this, I mean, I know we share a, a passion for, you know, personal development, learning more, becoming more, and therefore probably experiencing and enjoying more that life has to offer. And do you think this has a real, um, you know, for somebody very new to personal development or somebody very new to entrepreneurialism, people that are looking to, to maybe break out of the habits of the past, um, that negative thinking or that social environment that's not been very empowering. You know, do you feel that you know personal development is that first step to start to make new pathways in the brain? Yeah, it is. And but when you think of personal development, you're developing yourself. Mm. And every time we're growing, we're getting stronger. And if we're not growing, then as we just briefly spoke before this interview was that if you're not growing, you're ultimately kind of in a way dying. It's like a plant. You need to feed yourself continuously to evolve and grow in life. That's why we're here after all. Uh, The people before us in the genes and so on have had to modify depending on their environment. Now, what personal development does, it gives you the tools to retrain how your mind works, to access resources like confidence and motivation, to resolve conflicts, let go of stuff. And ultimately, master your mind. And I think that's one thing I'd love for schools to be able to teach a little bit more, um, to really educate young people to think, actually, I can change my emotional state. I can feel empowered. Because when we take responsibility for our life, when we become conscious of these limiting beliefs, we actually have an opportunity to do something about it. And when we take inspired and when we take massive action on learning and becoming more, we realize that how powerful we are as people. And that can only transform our health relationships, career and business, simply by taking responsibility. I mean, just to take another point, um, which I think is partly maybe down to society, we can have a lot of reasons and excuses as to why we can't do something, can't we sometimes? Mm -hmm. Yep. So we say, well, I can't do this because of that. I can't do this because of the financial situation or the financial climate. I can't do this because that person won't allow me. Well, I don't live my life that way. And I know you don't at all because we realize that reasons and ultimately excuses hold us back and actually disempowers us. It's like we're buying into other people's expectations. And that means that we can't take ownership. But when we take responsibility for our present situation right here, right now, it means we have ownership over our life. And therefore, we have ownership of where we take our life. And as we know that our past has led us to this point. Mm -hmm. So our past behavior or our past situations, thoughts and thinking has led us to this point right now. If we take responsibility for our life in this moment, assume that control and take ownership for our life, ownership for our mind, ownership for our reactions, ownership of our environment, then our future will completely transform. Because, I mean... Have you ever read the book Man's Search for Meaning at all? Do you know I haven't? No, I'm going to write uh, that down. Man's Search for Meaning. It's, um, it's by Viktor Frankl, and he was in the concentration camps. And he was in what was the worst? Of, I know they're all terrible concentration camps, but I always forget the main name. Alcatraz. Um, no, not Alcatraz. Oh, Auschwitz. Yeah, it's that one, isn't it? Yeah. And um, he was there, and he actually survived. And he said, uh, a quote, which something goes something like this. It's been a long time since I read it now. But he says, when we are unable to change a situation, we're challenged to change ourselves. Now, think of the situation that he was in. In our lifetime, I'm sure that would never happen again. He saw his family die. He saw um, people around him die, become depressed. But he came through and survived that experience and came up with that mindset. When we're unable to change us, uh, in our environment or situation, we're challenged to change ourselves. Now, if we can do that in our lives, uh, it just completely takes our problems into so much, such a smaller level that we think, well, if this guy can do this and survive life and become a better man for it and like to grow as a person from it, we can easily adapt to that philosophy in our mind. When we can't change a situation, we're challenged to change ourselves. That's a fantastic mindset to have. And I think certainly for, I mean, I, I've noticed there's, there's been a shift um, across, certainly across the UK and Europe at the moment with the, the current sort of social and economic environment we find ourselves in. I think people are looking for, 
you know, new ways to do things. I think, you know, people have that entrepreneurial spirit inside them and maybe it's kind of rearing its head up and they're thinking, well, hang on a minute, there's there's got to be a better way out there. Um, That's right. And I think people are maybe starting to look to, you know, I know from um, recently at the Empowerment Live event, there's a lot of people there that, you know, are, you know, running successful businesses in, in many different arenas, as mm-hmm. well as people that had come to a point in life where they're thinking, right, I just need to do something different. And they, they want it to be empowered to do so. Um, mm-hmm. I think there's been a shift where people aren't looking for that job for life anymore. Um, and this, this kind of attitude of developing a mindset, um, you know, to change and to challenge themselves to change um, is, yeah, it's, it's empowering for me and very exciting because I, I completely agree with you. People very much choose, you know, the choices and the actions of the moment of today are what are going to create the future. Um, That's right, yeah. And I think, you know, people can choose their environment. I mean, have you got any, you know, sort of any you know, simple tips maybe using NLP that can help people to develop this um, confident, challenging attitude to understand that they are in control of their choices to change their future. Is there anything specific we can advise people to do? Um, Yeah, I'm sure there is. I mean, to be honest, the way I see it is ultimately being conscious of this process. Mm -hmm. And it really transformed my life just knowing I am responsible. I've got to take responsibility to make a change in my life. When I had all those issues, I had to make a decision that this is not good enough, but something has to change and only I can do it. So just reinforcing that belief system that I am the cause of all the effects in my life. If I'm not happy with all the effects of my life, then I must change myself to make that change. So uh, the way that when I was writing my book, I, I, this sentence came to my mind is rather being a product of life, allow life to be a product of you. Yeah. So that means rather a life just affecting you, you actually turn it around. Okay. Okay. In my life, this is showing up. If I don't like it, I've got to take responsibility for that. And I've got to do whatever it takes to make that change. And then as we take massive and inspired action to do these changes, it's a continued learning process. But as a little process for you, um, for people out there, is to ultimately live more in this moment. I mean, this moment is very, very powerful right now. Mm -hmm. And I also understand we live in a high-paced world, and it's very hard to live in the moment. We we see the wonderful books like The Power of Now, um, like the the Buddhist teachings and so on, the spiritual teachings. And I think they're absolutely amazing. But also we've got to live in a real life, and we have got stuff happening. But to be able to to make consistent changes, I do this personally. As I go to sleep at night, I will take 10 or so 15 minutes to preserve the learnings of this day, of a day just gone. Because I know if I learn from those learn or learn from my day, I can take those learnings into the next day. And learnings will actually let go of emotional and psychological and behavioral issues anyway, because we're ultimately updating ourselves. We only have problems because our body thinks they're doing good things. If we have a fear of phobia, it's doing it for protection. If we have anxiety, so we're trying to control our future too much of all the things we don't want to happen. Mm -hmm. So ultimately, as you go to sleep at night, take 10, 15 minutes and preserve the learnings from that day. Nothing else. Forget about all the other things. Preserve the learnings. Then when you wake up in the morning, take 10, 15 minutes to rehearse your day exactly how you would like it to be and really see yourself taking responsibility, see yourself being empowered. And this does it for a couple of reasons. First of all, um, it's very much like a goal setting process, but okay, there's my goal for the day. Second of all, by rehearsing it in your mind, your unconscious mind ultimately thinks this is going to happen. Um, the mind cannot distinguish from what is imagined and what is real. And so when you go there in the mind, you ultimately go there in the body, you're actually firing off the same connections as if you were having it. Mm. So as you rehearse it in your mind, you're ultimately giving your unconscious mind the strategy of how you would like to perform that day. Then throughout the day, every couple of hours, take five minutes to sit in your environment and just take it in. Be peaceful for a while. Ultimately, that keeps you bringing back to the now. So every couple hours, just take 10 minutes, five minutes to sit sit peacefully and put your attention on this moment. Because in this moment, you become far more creative. You just live and flow throughout life. Mm 
But by going for, as you go to sleep, preserving your learnings, that deals with the past stuff, our, our past-based thinking. So we were transforming our negative past-based thinking into a, a positive way by preserving learnings and evolving. We're also taking care of our future-based thinking. Like if we ever get anxious, we, we're just resolving that by rehearsing our day. And also every few hours by being in the moment is causing us to live fully in the moment. And that's when you're far more confident. That's when you're far more creative. And also you're realizing that this moment is the most beautiful, most wonderful thing you could ever happen to you. And that's no matter what we're going for, just being in this moment and taking responsibility for it. As we do that, we're covering all fields. So you could say it's like kind of driving a car. When you're driving the car, you're, you occasionally look in the rear view mirror which is your past, you could say. You occasionally look back and you're preserving learnings to make sure you're on track. And you, so you know where you've been. You have the big, wide open, um, uh, I was going to say screen, window screen in front of you. Mm-hmm. And you're seeing where you're going. That's where you're putting your attention. That's where you're putting your focus. But you're always in the driving seat. You're always in the moment. So yeah, you can keep looking back at the past every so often just to preserve the learnings as you go to sleep at night. You're rehearsing, you know your map, you know where you're going in life by just rehearsing your day, but you're always firmly in the driving seat, directing where you wish to be. We've got to really just utilize that kind of metaphor into our lives. I love that, Joseph. I think that's that's um, a real cracking, usable um, sort of free free point tip for people to use to really empower themselves daily. I love the philosophy of just preserving the learnings of the day. And I think often a lot of people... Um, you know, educate themselves through personal development, but maybe this this preserving of them learnings of the the experience of the day, um, I feel can just really empower people to you know live that enjoyment. And then I suppose, as you're saying, in the morning when people are waking up, they're rehearsing their day. I suppose they're very they're rehearsing their very own mission statement to have that, That's right, that yeah. day of you know what would be their greatest day. Um, That's right. And I love I, mean, this, I love this thought of just taking a few moments as well. I mean, I do that myself unconsciously just mm-hmm. to enjoy the moment without realizing probably the importance of doing so. That's right. I mean, the reason why you you do so amazing at what you do, Craig, is because you've had to learn, right? Yeah. I mean, it didn't just happen to you. No, of course not. No. You had to, to dedicate and you had to learn. And like everyone who is successful, they have to learn. So just by doing the, that little process before you sleep, you're learning. And that means you're growing as a person. But as you said, rehearsing it in your mind, it's like your own mission statement. You're declaring to yourself, there's how I want my life to be. There's my strategy. And there's where I'm heading. And as you live in the moment, you embrace life as well. Because people say um, life is um, quite short, don't they? So oh, you've you got to do all these things. But it's also the longest thing you'll ever do in life as well. <laughs> so you might as well just live in this moment and enjoy it. Yeah. And really kind of take that responsibility because... Wherever you put your attention, you're, that's where you're getting your results. So if you're putting your intention and attention on issues, problems, reasons, excuses, that's where you're telling your unconscious mind to look for more of it. But when we put change our attention, our focus onto what we want, we're telling our unconscious mind, this is where we're heading. Yeah, I love that. Hey, do you know what? I really do appreciate your time. I know you're a busy man. I know you've had a really <clears throat> hectic um, few months and... Um, I'm sure you deserve some proper chill recuperation time soon, Joseph. Uh, yeah, that is the plan. <laughs> I, I, I really appreciate I'm sure that the listeners uh, today and, and any time they, they choose to connect and you know, re-listen to this podcast, I think they're going to enjoy the information. And I just love the, the, the philosophy to get people understanding that everything they need to have, be, become, and enjoy the moments of life they already have within them and the opportunity to make the choices to develop the mindset to just challenge and change themselves, ever evolving, ever learning, just to enjoy, you know, everything that they've got within them to create the abundance um, and fulfillment in, you know, their life's quest. So, um, Perfectly perfect. I I really do thank you very much for joining us. My Um, pleasure. Where where can people connect with you if they want to, you know, connect, find out a little bit more about you, Joseph? Well, one of my mission statements is just to give. Um, So uh, on, like, Facebook, I just give loads of free audio programs. I've got, like, an eight-hour audio program for confidence. So if you want to join me there, it's just facebook.com slash josephsfanpage. And Twitter.com slash josephclough or josephclough.com. 
and uh, I've got loads of free resources to help people. That's what I'm really about. Yeah, that's wicked, mate, and um, got a lot of time for that. And also, guys, um, Joseph's book, um, as he said, he's a Hay House author, soon to become a very successful author, I'm sure. Uh, it's called Be Your Potential, and it's going right. to be out in July. Um, myself being a, a, a product of personal development and somebody that's um, got a, a belief that it's the key to our personal growth, um, I'll, I'll certainly be picking up the book and highly recommend that others do too. The more we learn, the more we become. So, hey, Joseph, thank you very much. And um, I will uh, look forward to ca- connecting with you and catching up with you soon. Buddy. Absolutely. It's an absolute pleasure speaking to you as always. Cheers, mate. All right, have a great day. If you enjoyed today's show, we would appreciate it if you would like. Most people share through social media. Then subscribe, rate, and provide a review over at iTunes and SoundCloud. That's all for today. Thank you for joining us. The Passion to Succeed show is brought to you by passiontosucceed.com. Get over to the website, subscribe, and join the community of passionate people.